Okay, sir. So my today's class is uh, based upon is the continuation of the class which I took on day two. Uh, the class was about linear programming problem LPP, and I discussed about the formulation of the LPP model. And if you can recall that I discussed that every LPP model have uh, has uh, three parts. One is called the objective function. Uh, it's, it is called objective function because we want to optimize the function according to the requirement of the system. By optimization, I mean, uh, we actually mean maximization or minimization. Optimization is the general term for both the two. And this objective function, other than uh, this objective function contains the variables, uh, which where the variables are called decision variables. They are called decision variables because uh, the values of those variables decide whether the function, uh, how the function would be optimized. Therefore, they decide the fate of the function. Therefore, they are called decision variables. Decision variables are physical variables. They are real variables and often they are, they define the uh, number of something. So it, it gives us count, count of something. So these physical variables, generally, they are non-negative. That means either the, you can say either the count is zero or the count is positive. You cannot say, I cannot say that there are minus 20 participants in the, in the Google Classroom right now. So that doesn't have any meaning because 20 participants, as I can see, 20 is the count of the participant. So 20, either I can say there are zero participants, nobody has entered into my Google uh, online class, or there are 20 participants. So always this count is either zero or positive. Therefore, the thing which is either zero or positive is known as non-negative. So the decision variable present in the objective function are always non-negative. Generally, they are non-negative. And the second part of the uh, linear programming uh, formulation is the constraints. Constraints are called the restrictions imposed on the, imposed on the variables uh, uh, as part of the requirement of the system. So constraints are also written in terms of equations or inequations. We can get the mixture of equations and inequations. In, uh, in a linear programming mo uh, model. And the third part is when we say that decision variables are non-negative. So these are the three parts. These are the three parts which define linear programming problem. There is no hard and fast rule by which you can, uh, there is no, no such formula that you are going to put the values in that formula and the form, uh, model formulation, uh, the, 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 the model will be formulated. Okay, so you have to read uh, the lines given in the problem, you have to understand what is what has been sought from the problem. You have to decide the variables and you have to accordingly find the linear programming uh, formulation for the given system. The system is called linear. It is because the variables associated with the system will have power one. There are many softwares which can uh, which can uh, uh, help you to uh, solve a linear programming system, but there are no softwares, no such software, which will help you to formulate the model. Formulation of the model is, uh, the, the, the efficiency in formulating the model can, be, can only be achieved through practice. So during the puja vacation, or I cannot recall, just before the puja vacation or just after the puja vacation, I cannot remember right now, I gave you, I asked you to try the, exercise of uh, H.A. Taha book, first exercise of H.A. Taha book and to formulate the models. If we have done so, okay, if you have do not uh, do so, uh, you have not done so uh, till, till now, then I'll, I shall suggest you to, uh, to practice those problems, just the model formulation part. Today I'm going to discuss the next stage after we formulate the model, then we are supposed to solve the model. So my today's discussion is totally based upon how to solve the linear programming problem. So I have written here how to solve. Now, the answer is here in the note. Uh, and uh, the 
answer to the problem that how to solve a system is not a unique answer. Actually, there are several ways by which a linear programming problem can be solved. One of the ways is called the graphical method. So today I'm going to discuss the graphical method with you in the first session. In the second se session, I shall continue discussing about graphical model. Uh, in the first session, I have prepared a note, a PDF for you so that I can discuss the uh, pros and cons of this particular methodology. And probably you, you may find, I think that you may find some parts a bit, uh, some pictures of this particular note may become, may, be, may become hazy to you, but you don't have to worry much. Uh, in the second session, we shall do some board work. I shall try take, I shall share the white, white board of a Zoom and I shall do the graphs over there so that the things become more and more clear to you. And in the third session, you are, that is a question answer session where you shall clarify your doubts by asking questions. Okay, so if you have any doubts, then you can note it down in the, in your copy. And then you, in the third session, where I shall, I shall signal, I shall give you a signal uh, about the third session. There you can ask the questions one after another. So let me begin my first session with the discussion of graphical method that is written in the PDF. After the class, as if there are any new students, after the class, uh, I shall uh, post this particular note in the Google Classroom. And if I can upload the video in the YouTube, because uploading the video in the YouTube sometimes create problem. So if I am successfully, if I'm successful in uploading the video in the YouTube of today's session, then I shall also send you the link through Google Classroom. And uh, yesterday there was BTEC orientation program. From there I came to know that very soon the college is going to open from December. We, you shall be notified about that by your coordinators. If it is, if it happens, then I'll be the happiest person because this online uh, taking class offline, physical physical class is far more better than taking online class. And operations research class uh, has to be physical because it is very difficult to take online class of operations research. Okay, anyways, but if we are uh, forced to be quarantined at home and we are forced to take the online class, then there is no other way out. Then I have to stick to the process I'm going through right now. Okay, so anyways, let's hope for the best. So my problem one is solve the following linear programming problem using the graphical method. Okay, here I have considered a problem. You see, I have written max Z is equal to two X plus three Y. Max Z means the Z has been written inside bracket. Okay, so uh, it, this, the meaning of this is, they are asking you to maximize Z. Maximize Z. They are asking you to maximize the function Z. What is the form of the function? The form of the function is linear. It is given as two X plus three Y, where the variable X and Y have power one, and therefore it is linear. So they are asking you to maximize the function Z. Now the variables X and Y are subjected to some constraints. What are these constraints? They are subjected to three constraints. First of all, X plus two Y less than or equal to minus one. That is one constraint, one restriction. X plus Y less than or equal to one. That is another restriction. Y equals to three. That is another restriction. So the constraints in the linear programming problem can be a mixture of inequalities and equalities. There is no hard and fast rule that all mixtures should be inequal. All the constraints should be inequality or all the constraints should be equality. Then there can be mixtures. These are the constraints derived from the system. And the lastly, I have mentioned that X comma Y is greater than or equal to zero. As I told, told you that capital X, sorry, sorry, small X and small Y, they are physical variables and very physical variables are always non-negative because they define the count of something. The basis of this particular problem means that the, the system from which the model has been derived is not given over here. Uh, here, the question setter is only interested about the technicality of solving this particular model. The, how, to how the model has been formulated, it is not a point of discussion in today's class. There was a system 
from which that this particular model has been deduced. Today, I'm going to discuss the technicality of solving only, solving this particular problem only, okay? What is the prerequisite? You have to have some kind of prerequisite to solve this particular problem. What is the prerequisite? Prerequisite is, you see the rule carefully. The rule says that we consider, we know that uh, the linear equation like uh, of the form ax plus by is equal to c. This uh, defines a straight line, okay? So we have considered and and this equation ax plus by less than or equal to c and greater than or equal to c. I have written this inside the bracket. That means either ax plus by is less than or equal to c or it can be greater than or equal to c. So we have considered an inequation here where small a, small b, small c, these are the real numbers. We have considered an inequation. We know that if we consider equation of the form ax plus by equals to c, that linear equation defines a straight line. But the inequation ax plus by less than or equal to c, ax plus by greater than or equal to c, they will define the region bounded by the straight line ax plus by equals to c. So inequalities, the equalities always define the straight line but inequalities will define the region bounded by the straight line. The region may be the region uh, 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 sitting on the left hand side of the straight line or on the right hand side of the straight line. Region sitting on the, be, uh, sitting below the straight line or above the straight line. So that will define always the region, but what region? The region which is, which is uh, defined or which is, which has been, uh, uh, the region which has been in the picture due to the drawing of the straight line ax plus by equals to c. Say for example, I have shown you a figure over here. Suppose ax plus by equals to c is this straight line. This is the straight line you are getting. Now what do we mean by the region? If ax plus by is less than or equal to c, then probably this side ax plus by greater than or equal to c then probably that side okay the entire side on the right hand side or entire side on the left hand side question is which side whether ax plus by less than c less than or less than c represents uh, the left hand side or the right hand side or we can put forward the question in the following way whether ax plus by greater than c represents the right hand side or left hand side so a question mark has been put over here so I'm going to answer to that question. Which side? Which side will, which will be, which particular side will be represented by which equation, which inequation? Okay. Now you see, suppose you have the inequation of the form ax plus by less than or equal to c, or you have the equation like of the form ax plus by greater than or equal to c. When you get an inequation, you are going to substitute x equal to zero and y equal to zero over here. x equal to zero in the place of x, y equal to zero in the place of y. After substituting, if you find that uh, the inequation is satisfied, that means you are going to consider that region bounded by the straight line in which the point zero zero lies. But after substitution of x equal to zero and y equal to zero in the inequation, if you find that inequation is not satisfied, then you are going to consider that region bounded by the straight line, which is just opposite to the region containing the origin zero zero. Okay, I probably this is not clear to you. Uh, that will be after the uh, after the end of this class you, that of the thing will be totally clear to you so you just hold on your breath okay i i'm going to explain that thing i'm going to going to come to this particular portion once again okay Gra i'm now moving into the steps of graphical method okay and i'm trying to solve the given problem while solving the given problem I shall again come to this particular region section and I will define what does it actually mean. You will understand in a, when I shall discuss the problem with you.
but before that let me discuss the another let me discuss another perspective of the graphical method which is defined in step 1 when you were in school and you when you knew about the straight lines and equations you know that every equation has a, a dependent variable and an independent variable usually we consider we define the dependent variable by y and the independent variable by x and when we were asked to draw the graph we were supposed to put values to the independent variable and the dependent variables value were uh, were got opt were obtained and together we plotted we used to plot the independent variable and the corresponding dependent variable values in the graph paper and accordingly after joining the points we got curve or we got straight line that was the usual practice but here in this particular problem there there will be a trick what is the trick to draw a straight line you don't have to do much of that thing by putting this by substituting the values of x and getting values of y this thing will be tedious so you can do it in a better way what is the way if you have an if you have an equation of the form ax plus by equals to c you will consider its intercept form what is the intercept form always try to put the equation in the form ax plus by equals to c okay and then you are going to divide both the sides by such a number so that your right hand side of the equation becomes 1 so what i have done over here you see you can do this rough work in your copy write ax plus by equals to c divide both the sides by c then what will get we will get ax by c plus by by c is equal to c by c so that implies we get uh, ax by x ax by c plus by by c is equal to 1 so in the intercept form you are supposed to get 1 on the right hand side always there has to be 1 on the right hand side not minus 1 to bring 1 whatever you need to do you have to do okay if you are to bring 1 if you need to do by if you need to divide by the min the main thing is that you have to divide the entire equation by the right hand side constant c c may be positive may be negative whatever okay if c is zero that is a different issue so we got ax by c plus by by c equals to 1 now you can write ax by c as x by c by a just to see x divided by c by a is same as ax by c y divided by c by b is same as by by c so we have got the equation e of the form x by something plus y by something is equal to 1 that is called the intercept form c the quantity c by a is the intercept on the x axis and the quantity c by b is the intercept on the y axis after that we draw the straight lines in the same graph in the same graph by the by the word in the same graph we mean that there will be many equations there may be many equations of the form ax plus by equals to c just like in our given problem we have got we have got three equations what this this is what equation 1 this is equation 2 and that is equation 3 so as many as many equations are there you have to consider their intercept form and draw the straight lines therefore it is written that we draw the graph uh, on the, we draw the straight lines in the same graph for separate equation there should not be any separate graph in in a particular graph in a single graph you are going to draw all the constraints together okay and all the constraints the constraints the, means the straight lines will cut one another if one straight line going in that way the another straight line will go, go that way and they will intersect at a particular point if there are three straight lines one going that way another going that way another going this way and they will intersect at a common point so such a thing will happen over here okay and uh, for your kind information uh, for doing this you don't have to consider any for doing the problems of, on problems on graphical met method you don't have to 
use the graph paper you can do it in your white page you can draw the axis and you can see the things okay but uh, you have to use a scale so that the measurements are all right the proper and they are equally equidistant from one another okay you can use the graph paper or you may avoid using the graph paper but it usually uh, for solving graphical method in the examination graph papers are not provided so i am considering the equation <clears throat> i am considering the equation uh, present over here say for example x plus 2y less than or equal to minus 1 is my first equation okay let us see what to do with that equation okay so the equation is x plus 2y what is the equation the the thing which is given over here is the inequation less than or equal to thing is there okay but before we find the region we have to draw the straight line because the region is actually bounded by the straight line the region is actually bounded by that straight line so we have to draw the straight line to draw the straight line as i am i have discussed we need the intercept form but carefully observe if this equation if this inequation x plus 2y less than or equal to minus 1 if this inequation is uh, the equality part is considered only that is x plus 2y equals to minus 1 then this is not in its intercept form because on the right hand side minus 1 is there i so i told you that in the intercept from form on the right hand side we need to have we need to get plus 1 always so i have to bring this equation in its intercept form and therefore what i did i divided both the sides of the equation of the inequation by minus 1 you see x by minus 1 plus this becomes what was there the second inequation was uh, 2y twice y so we have divided it by twice y by minus 1 and it becomes y by minus half less than or equal to minus 1 by 1 that is 1 and this is the intercept form of the given inequation this is called the intercept form because something by something something by something x by something y plus y by something has been obtained on the right hand side one the value one is there for the second inequation that is x plus y less than or equal to 1 we don't have to bring it into its intercept form because it is already in its intercept form why because on the right hand side we have one and x plus y is equal to 1 can be written as x by 1 plus y by 1 is is equal to 1 so intercept of x intercept on the x axis in this particular case is 1 intercept on the y axis in this particular case will be 1 so in the denominator 1 is there x by x is x can be written as x by 1 y can be written as y by 1 and so on okay so this is in its intercept form and the last one we don't have to put this in intercept form at all why is it so because in the in the last the last equation is actually telling you that it is a straight line uh, parallel to x axis why because for all values of x y is a, y is equal to 3 so we don't have to consider this if if something like x equal to constant or y equals to constant is there always remember that x equals to constant is a straight line parallel to y axis and y equals to constant is a straight line parallel to x axis so this has don't have to uh, we, we don't have to consider the intercept intercept form for, intercept form for the third case also so i have written here beside the equation i have written changed form here i have written no change and here i have written no need to change at all okay this parts have been written for your understanding you can avoid these words in the examination it is for just for your uh, it is just from the pedagogical point of view i have written i have mentioned it now one after another i am going to draw the straight lines in a same graph so i have drawn the x x i x axis uh, sorry there is a misprint sorry this is uh, this should be x and that should be y okay just just rectify it is a misprint sorry this should be x and that should be y so first of all i am going to draw the straight lines 
one by one. So the 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 I am starting from the third one. Okay, the third third equation is y equal to three. So I am drawing this equation as y equal to three like this. Y equal to three means, please mute yourself. Whoever is unmuted, please mute yourself. So I have drawn the third equation y equal to three, and why you know the y equal to three is the constant, is the straight line parallel to x-axis. So I have drawn this particular straight line. I have now going in, going to the straight line given by x, the equation given by x plus y less than or equal to one. Okay, for the for the inequation x plus y less than or equal to one, the corresponding straight line is x plus y is equal to one. So what is the intercept of x intercept of x is 1 and intercept of y is 1 so i have marked the coordinate 1 0 over here and 0 1 over here this is the coordinate on the x axis ignore ignore this term this is the coordinate on the x axis so its coordinate is 1 0 and this is the coordinate on the y axis so it is its coordinate is 0 1 the intercept on the x axis is 1 because x by 1 is there intercept on the y axis is 1 because y by 1 is there and i have marked these two points and i have joined them by straight line so this is represented by my by the equation x plus y is equal to 1 okay and for the last one that is x by minus 1 and y by minus half i have marked uh, the point minus 1 on the x axis negative side of the x axis and minus half on the negative side of the y axis and these are the intercepts and i have joined them by a straight line so all the straight lines have been drawn now i am coming to this point the at point i was talking about that putting origin putting 0 0 on on the equation and to see whether 0 0 satisfies the equation or not so that it defines which re, which particular region i am talking about let us apply this particular criteria to the given problem So let us start with the first equation that is this one. We are going to put say in this equation we are going to put 0 x equal to 0 and y equal to 0. So what will I what will I get? I will get 0 by minus 1 plus 0 by minus half. That is 0 by minus 1 means 0 and 0 by minus half means 0. So 0 plus 0 which is obviously less than 1. So the point 0 0 satisfies this inequation the point 0 0 satisfies this inequation and therefore as is mentioned over here since 0 0 satisfies the inequation i shall consider that side of the equation that side of the straight line which contains 0 0 so you see if i consider this green line corresponding to the first inequation the side which contains 0 0 is this one right hand side the above or you can say the right hand side or the uh, the side on the top i am putting some kind of marks like this this it means that the entire region is going to be considered this this kind of curves means the entire region i am considering entire region falling on the right hand side of this because 0 0 falls on the right hand side if i substitute in the next equation x equal to 0 and y equal to 0 you see 0 0 uh, this becomes 0 plus 0 less than or equal to 1 so 0 is less than 1 which is also satisfied and therefore if i consider this straight line x plus y equal to 1 we try to find out which side of the straight line contains 0 0 so this side of the straight line contains 0 0 so we are considering this region which i have black we have which i have made black over here that is the region on that side of the straight line which contains 0 0 okay and in the last equation if i put x y equal to 0 then 0 equal to 3 which is absurd 0 cannot be equal to 3 and therefore we don't we don't consider any any side of the straight line it is also because y equal to 3 is the straight line which gives you the points which fall on the straight line it doesn't represent any region so no need to find out no need to get yourself in the search in in searching for the region represented by this straight line y equals to 3 because it is the straight line which contains the point in it you may ask me one question over here 
why have I considered this side of the graph only? I mean, the positive side of the graph, positive quadrant of the graph. I could have considered the negative quadrants, that, that quadrant two and quadrant three and quadrant four. It is because of the constraint x greater than or equal to zero, y greater than or equal to zero. Because x and y are physical variables and we have to consider the positive side, positive quadrant of the graph paper only. So we have drawn all the graphs and we have marked all the regions. We have less than one minute. This video will get, this uh, session will get canceled and then you, then you rejoin one second. We shall continue uh, from this particular point. Okay. So here we have drawn all the straight lines and marked the regions. In the next session, I'm going to discuss what to do further with the, with the problem. Sir, why have you marked all the regions of the straight line x plus 2y less than x? Why it is not only the 